I was uh, trained as a medical doctor. But since the uh, 1980 democratic uprising, my life had been 180 degree change. And then I have become human rights advocate. I have been walking alone, struggle for freedom in the last 20 years with the dream to have a peaceful, democratic Burma in which all the ethnic nationalities can coexist together with equality, non-discrimination, and then dignity. Burma is now at a very critical moment. We all are encouraged to see the release of our leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, after the scam election organized by the regime. As the moderator said, after mounting international pressure, regime started to make sort of sham initiative to give the impression that they are for the reform. But if we look at the result of the 1990 election, it, is, it was neither free nor fair, and then military back party took almost all of their seats in the parliament. So even though there are structural changes, the new institution, the government and parliament, having dominated by the generals, we have to say that the changes we are seeing now in Burma today is just like uh, putting the old wine in the new glass. The, those rulers from the old regime, you know, they put off their uniform and they again take the position in the new government. Anyway, Dong San Suu Kyi doesn't give up the struggle. Once she was released from the house arrest, despite the regime claim the party, the National League for Democracy, is no longer legal, she started to activate the, the movement. Though it is, NLD is not decided, does not decide not to contest in the regime orchestrated election in 2010, it remained as a very popular and influential party with a nationwide network. On one hand, Aung San Suu Kyi urges the people to participate in the struggle and help each other in the face of socioeconomic crisis. Within the last 10 months, we have seen the expansion of political and social networks in Burmese society, participated by youths, lawyers, farmers, and workers. People become outspoken and raise the voices to take reforms to address the economic and social illness of the country and restore national reconciliation and peace. On the one hand, the Aung San Suu Kyi continue to uphold the principle that dialogue and negotiation, negotiated political settlement is the best option for the country. For the first time, because of the international pressure, the president of the regime had a meeting with the Aung San Suu Kyi on August 19. For the time being, the regime is throwing promises for reform. However, promises remain need to be followed by concrete action for genuine reforms. The pre-talk with the Aung San Suu Kyi must be followed by a substantive and time-bound political dialogue. So if the regime is serious for the national reconciliation, the first action that must be taken is the unconditional release of political prisoners and ensure the participation of these political prisoners in the political process. More than 2,000 political prisoners remain in the Burmese jail and continue to face the mistreatment and abuses in prison. We received several reports of political prisoners suffering from the severe health problems caused by inhumane and harsh conditions in the prison. Regime continue to practice torture during the interrogation and use prisoners as porters. Even though they are signaling words, signs for the reconciliation, they don't stop arresting people. Just yesterday, 46 years old man was arrested for staging a solo protest 
in front of the Chinese embassy for his protest against the electric uh, uh, the, the dam in the northern part of Burma. That dam was intended to provide power supply to China. And just a few weeks ago, one of our colleagues, a video journalist, was sentenced for additional 10 years for using internet for uploading video footages for the exile media. He had already been sentenced for eight years with the Unlawful Association Act. Now, his sentence had been added for another 10 years. He is a, just a 20 years old man. So 18 years will be the waste period for him, for just a young man. Another matter of concern are ongoing tension in the ethnic border areas. Collapse of ceasefire agreement with the Kachin and, in the Kachin and Shan state and escalation of armed conflict. After the, just after the election, regime resumed the offensive to Karen, Shan and Kachin state, resulting serious human rights violation, including attacks against the civilian population, massive internal displacement, land confiscation, recruitment of child soldiers, forced labor, and portering for the army. During the past two months of fighting in Kachin state, Bami soldiers have been raping women and young girls. Kachin Women Association in Thailand documented the rape of 40 women and girls in eight townships, and 15 of whom had been killed after rape. That is the very grand picture of the Burma. But uh, our colleagues inside the country never give up their struggle. The democracy movement happening in Middle East inspired most of the young generation from Burma. We have seen you know, the young generation is joining the NLD, joining the social network, and then you know, they are pushing for reform. In our case, the regime, it's not enough for give promises if they are serious for national reconciliation. If they want to get international recognition, they must immediately stop torture, immediately stop rape, immediately stop summary execution in the ethnic area, and they must release more than 2,000 political prisoners and ensure them to participate in the political process. It has been for a long time, widespread and systematic human rights violation has been going on in Burma with impunity. Since 1991, I have been struggling to pass a resolution on Burma at every section of the UN General Assembly and Human Rights Council. We already have piles of reports by the Human Rights Special Rapporteur. We already have several visits of the UN Special Envoy of the Secretary General to facilitate for dialogue. After 20 years, you know, we just see the words, not the deeds by the regime. So we need to keep up the international uh, pressure. Of course, you know, that uh, information and communication technology empower the democracy movement. We are getting a lot of benefit. Now it is, the communication is getting easier, but you know, the internet freedom in Burma is still very severely restricted. The Burmese military regime imposed two regulations. One is called Myanmar Computer Science Development Law, which made the position of an unregistered computer modem in connection to unauthorized computer networks punishable up to 15 years in prison. They imposed another law called electronic transaction law, and internet users can face prison terms of seven to 15 years for receiving, sending, and distributing information related to politics and, hu politics and human rights. They also control the contents. They block the political websites and media in exile. But for the first time, just last week, they unblock some exile medias like the BBC and VOA. We have to wait and see how long they will keep these websites unblocked. And they also conduct DDoS attack to the exile website. And then 
they used to shut down you know, the whole infrastructure of uh, internet you know, at the time of the crisis. When there was a uh, Saffron Re Revolution led by the Burmese Buddhist monks in 2007, they completely shut down the internet for several weeks. And they also sp sporad sp sporadically blocked Gmail and Yahoo you know, when they, whenever there is a crisis. They also used the coercive measures. Most of the monks, students, bloggers, and online journalists arrested after the Saffron Revolution in 2007 were charged with the in internet-related laws and subjected to long prison sentences. And 2010 reports of the Reporters Without Border confirm you know, the detention of 15 journalists and two internet activists and detention. One of them is the one of the member of the NLD called Lala Wen. She is serving 27 years prison time just for taking video footage and then sending to the exiled media called Democratic Voice of Burma. Just last week on 14 September, DVO, uh, Democratic Voice of Burma video journalist Situ Zia, who is already serving eight year sentence and in insane prison under Unlawful Association Act, received additional 10 year extension to his sentence based on the Electronic Transition Act. So the situation is still very critical. It is not enough for the international community to keep wait and see position. You know, whenever we try to request to keep up pressure, we have been asked, oh, please wait for a moment. The regime is going to organize the election. We have been asked, when we ask to organize commissioner inquiry to investigate the regime's violations of war crimes and crime against humanity, again, the international community is saying, wait for a moment. The regime had a talk with the Aung San Suu Kyi. And then they are talking about reforms at the parliament. We hope that the current section of the UN General Assembly passed a resolution at the third committee, a resolution which, is, which reflect the reality on the ground, not the promises of the regime. We hope that the current section of the General Assembly request the Secretary General to establish commission or inquiry to invest, investigate war crimes and crime against humanity and the culture of impunity. But on the other hand, we still look forward to the UN Secretary General good offices to continue to put our thoughts for the national reconciliation in Burma because the best option for our country is dialogue and negotiated political settlement. We would like to ask the UN to appoint full-time special envoy for Burma. In our case, international opinion is still divided. United States, European Union, and other Western countries are condemning the regime, imposing some sanction measures. The neighboring countries are doing business with the Burmese military. Burmese military is getting comfort zone in our region. And China is the one who is probing up the Burmese military and then protecting them at the Security Council and other UN bodies. So the UN has a lot to be done to coordinate all these diverse views and to develop a coordinated international efforts to help the people of Burma. All the challenges still waiting ahead, but we will never give up. I hope I will continue to continue the struggle with the dream of peaceful, democratic Burma. And I will continue to work with all the solidarity groups and friends around the world to get back democracy and human rights in our country. Thank you very much for your interest and support.